What up YouTube? My name is Sage. Today I'm going to be doing a Bard Mastery video. This one is going to be on the Bard's third level spells. Bestow Curse. A couple different things that Bestow Curse does. It is a versatile spell, and as I've been saying, Bards really want their versatile spells, but I'm not sure if this one's quite getting to where we need it to be. So let's kind of go through it just a little bit. So our first option is that we can give disadvantage on ability throws and saving checks revolving around one ability score. So we can say, hey, strength, now you have poor grappling, and if we have a Maximilian's Earthen Grasp going on, now you have to compete against that at disadvantage both. So there is some versatility here, and I do get the feeling that if you were able to land this on someone and your team has a single save that they target often, it could be potentially powerful. However, it's it's kind of weird that they need to succeed on a saving throw to have disadvantage on saving throws. It kind of reminds me of would you rather have two attacks or one attack with advantage? You'd rather have two attacks because it's basically the same thing except you have a chance of hitting twice. I kind of feel the same about this. You could set up your allies to have advantage on their saves or you could just make them save and then your ally can attempt to make them save and maybe they fail both. So it kind of goes into that, re that region for me. The next curse up is that they have disadvantage advantage on attack rolls against you only. If this was disadvantage on attack rolls in general, it would be more powerful. You only. You really don't want them attacking you in the first place. We're trying to avoid being attacked at all. And we don't want to be in touch range to set this up, especially if it fails, because now we're in touch range. So I don't think this defends us the way we want it to. The next one up is if they fail their initial saving throw, they make that same saving throw at the beginning of every single turn. If they fail it, they just cannot do an action that turn. They can still move, bonus action, all those things, but they can't do an action that turn, which is pretty great. I think this is probably the best one. And if they do succeed the secondary th saving throws, it just means they can use their action that turn. They still have to roll next turn. So this is potentially quite powerful in that we're wasting multiple turns in a row. However, it's competing with things like Hypnotic Pattern, where we can take multiple actions. So long as we don't attack them or their allies help them, we can get six, seven, eight, nine, ten rounds where they're doing nothing with no save. Not to mention that it hits multiple people. So that is its most powerful that Bestow Curse gets, and I don't think it's powerful enough. The next one up is kind of like Hex, except it's a D8 instead of a D6, but we have to be in touch range to get it off, and we're not attacking anyways. It is only us that gets that bonus damage. Overall, I feel like Bestow Curse is technically versatile. It can do many different things, but all of those things revolve around combat, and they're not powerful enough to carry the spell. Now, Bestow Curse does have a rubber clause where it says, according to your DM, they can create other curses, you can create other curses together, and so long as they're around the same power level, should be allowed. Yeah, I think there's potential to do some interesting things with this, with the right DM and the right creative mindset. I think there's a lot of fun to be had with Bestow Curse, but from a per purely optimization standpoint, I think it's a pass. Next up is Catnap. So Catnap's weird. It's basically a spell to get three people a short rest once per day. That's done in 10 minutes as opposed to an hour. Now, if you can combine this with short rests, you might get quite a bit of value out of it. In the community, this spell is looked at as bad. And I think a lot of it is because they just assume, why not take a short rest? Well, the idea is you can take one of these on top of your short rests. And for some classes, warlocks, monks, you're going to have really big short rests. Short rests are a big deal. This would be really cool if we could combine it with Song of Rest that we get from the bars feature list, because then our short rests go further. And they do technically. Our two normal short rests, they have to spend less hit die because we're helping out with our Song of Rest hit die, which hopefully leaves some hit die left over for Catnap to be taken advantage of. Now, if you're not regularly getting into short rests in a long adventuring day, this probably isn't the spell for your campaign. If your DM has these long drawn out days with multiple combats, Catnap might be a spell to consider. However, on the same level of spells, we have Liamin's Tiny Hut, which while not a direct competitor, is a competitor that we can just give ourselves the short rest fairly safe and so an hour and 10 minutes don't really matter so i'm going to put it into the maybe utility but it's on the lower end of maybe utility next up is clairvoyance clairvoyance is a scouting tool it's definitely in the utility category and it's not bad being able to see past a wall or hear beyond a wall is great information and information gathering i always talk about this but information gathering is hard to quantify but i think is powerful because if you have proper information, you can make proper decisions. If you're making proper decisions, things go right. It's easy to look at D&D as does this win fights? Yes, no, good, bad. But decision making is a massive part of D&D and this helps with it. The only question is if the third level spell slot 
is going to be worth the information gathered and that's a lot harder to evaluate so this falls into utility and I think it's good utility, but the question is whether or not we're going to have the spell slots to take advantage of it. Next up is Dispel Magic. Dispel Magic is a staple anti-magic spell. It is reactionary. So where I like Dispel Magic is if we have our fight winning spell up, we just have Dispel Magic in our back pocket. So if our enemy does anything fishy with it, we can cast Dispel Magic and keep our fight winning spell up. It's more of a support utility spell and a very powerful one. I think Dispel Magic is fairly safe to say gonna be on the high end of the utility. Enemies Abound. Enemies Abound is a very fun spell. The discussion Enemies Abound falls in is whether or not it's a fight winning spell. And situationally it is. If you have one really dumb ogre and a bunch of orcs around that ogre, by casting it on the ogre, yeah, you can absolutely set yourself up to win that combat before it even begins because they're going to get into a fight, some orcs are going to die, the ogre might die, and there you go. But with each point of damage giving another save we can safely call this spell unreliable this is lessened by the fact that it calls on intelligence saving throws however it's once again increased because we don't really know how this creature is going to react by being surrounded by enemies it might run it might fight we don't really know so i consider it too unreliable but it's so much fun that I, i'm going to take it with some characters even though i probably shouldn't Next up is Fast Friends. This is like Charm Person, except supposedly a little bit better because if we ask friendly, they're going to take on the task, you know, no matter what. I say that in bunny quotes because of the line where it says, if it conflicts with the creature's normal activities and desires, the creature can make another wisdom saving throw. We're casting this spell because we want them to do something not normal. And as it's written, that calls on another saving throw. It's really weird. It, I don't think that line should be there, but it is. And so it really does feel like Charm Person, except they m will do everything they would normally do without a save, and they're going to do it happily, so we can kind of force their actions, but if they do anything outside of what they're normally going to do, now it's another save, which is worse than Charm Person. So hard spell to evaluate because it's going to depend a lot on how your DM interprets these words. As written, it sounds like even worse Charm Person, which is definitely not how it's intended. So I don't know how I'd rule that. I'd probably be ruling on the lenient side of Fast Friends as a DM myself. Fear. Fear is a fantastic area of effect, fight winning spell that would be on the pinnacle if not for Hypnotic Pattern. Hypnotic Pattern has an easier area to hit and a similarly powerful effect. I actually kind of consider them on par with each other because Fear, you can, you can keep beating on them while they have that effect up, whereas Hypnotic Pattern you cannot. However, Hypnotic Pattern is a very strong initial effect. But man, you would be safe taking fear instead of hypnotic pattern as your fight winning spell if you want to mix it up a little bit hypnotic pattern is very very good but it can get stale because it's so good and i think fear is another option to take where you're getting similarly powerful effects but you're doing it with a new flavor i really do like fear feign death it's one of our rituals feign death is fun it's Utility is questionable, and it depends on how creative you are. I loved this on the Holy Assassin build, which if you haven't checked out our Holy Assassin build, it's a pretty cool build where you're like this cleric assassin. Pretty neat. For most characters, it might be utility that comes up every now and again. Very fun, very flavorful, but it's going to compete with the other rituals, and I just don't think it competes if we're speaking about optimization. Glyph of Warding. Now we have a whole video on Glyph of Warding that's going to do the spell much more justice than I'm going to do it here. Glyph of Warding is a spell that I really think gets the most out of it when you have other spells that combine well with it. But it is high maintenance, you do have to go out of your way to make it work well. I might, might go through what it takes to make Glyph of Warding work well for us. Depends on the character, if we can force movement or if we can convince people or set traps, we can do cool things with this, but it always feels higher maintenance maintenance than just a straightforward fight winning spell. This goes on the low end of utility for me. Hypnotic Pattern, the premier fight winning spell for third level spells altogether. Probably the best third level spell in the game, especially as a fight winning spell. Just absolutely fantastic. Really, I don't need to say anything more. This is very likely going to end up on your spell list if you're being optimal. Intellect Fortress. Intellect Fortress has a good effect, but because it only affects one person, it's really limited in its usefulness. When we're upcasting it higher, sure, it affects more people, but we're getting to some really high spell slots to get your party to have all these benefits. 
Too niche for me, it's a pass. Lehman's Tiny Hut, speaking of rituals we have to compete with, this is the one you're competing with. Lehman's Tiny Hut allows us to create basically an invincible barrier that we can sleep in to get rests perfectly. It's eight hours, so it is perfect for a long rest. You barely need to keep a watch with this spell. It's so good that I don't love it. It's too good. It really limits the DM's ability to create tension because only certain creatures and spellcasters and things that come up from the ground can really affect you. That's just kind of lame. All that being said, it is powerful and good and very low cost. Major image. I love the illusion line. I really do. It's so dope. Really hard to evaluate how good it's going to be for you. It depends a lot on your DM and it depends a lot on your creativity. But I do love this spell. I really do. I'd put it on the middle line of utility, but leaning towards the high end of utility. And I think that's biased. I think realistically, this is probably middle end of utility, but I love it so much that it bumps to the high end of utility for me. I'm probably taking this spell fairly often with my bards. Mass Healing Word. Mass Healing Word is improved healing word, which we love, but how much better is it? Well, Healing Word is powerful because it's an emergency in battle heal. This does the same thing, and then you're gonna heal some other allies a little bit. The healing is not while you're here. The picking up allies is. So the only time this is better than normal Healing Word is if we're picking up multiple allies, which doesn't happen that often. So where I love Healing Word, Mass Healing Word is probably a pass for me. All right, so motivational speech. This one really needs to be compared to aid, which I consider a decent buff. It's a better buff for when we have spell slots that are never going to be used and we can just kind of throw them out there. So when we're getting into our higher levels, second level spells aren't really being used, throw aid around. Motivational speech does the same thing aid does to two extra creatures, and then it adds a couple of extra benefits. The first and more important benefit is that until they lose those temporary HP, they have advantage on wisdom saves. This can be quite good situationally. A lot of times creatures are just gonna chew through those five HP and it's not gonna do much. Other times creatures want to lead with wisdom saves and this protects you in that situation. And now that creature, instead of getting to open the fight the way it wants to, has to whittle down HP and then be able to cast its wisdom saves or whatever. So it is pretty good in that regard. Now, I am a little confused on the advantage after you get hit, because after you get hit, you don't have your temporary HP very likely. So do you get advantage or not? I'm not actually sure. If you don't, okay, whatever. If you do, okay, that's kind of nice for your marshals. They get advantage on their next attack. It's okay. Now, where this falters in comparison to aid is aid lasts eight hours. You can just toss it on and forget it at the beginning of the day, and it's likely going to help your team out at some point. Where this one lasts for one hour, you need to be much more detailed on when you cast it. Overall, I do think it's better than aid, and I think it's better than I thought it was before doing this video. So motivational speech is one of those surprising spells that kind of snuck up on me that I think I need to practice more with because I do think it has potential. Next up is non-detect completely story driven spell if you have an item that needs non-detection cast on it desperately oh it can be amazing but you only take this if the story is calling for it it will do nothing unless the story calls for it so it's a weird spell to evaluate but probably not going to be a take plant growth while it kind of seems weird to be on the bard spell list i actually really do love the imagery of bards playing music and plants growing around them i just think that's a really fun flavor and i really fell in love with the mix of druid flavor and bard flavor when i did the math musician build back in the day which is like yeah a bard druid if you want to check it out um so anyways back to plant growth plant growth is pretty sick it's it's a very powerful spell but it's very situational if you're in the right terrain where you could take advantage of its one action cast then you can do all sorts of cool things, huge areas of super difficult terrain. But you can also do things where you do one out of four of these uh, grid patterns. You do one out of four is plant growth. The rest are not, which makes large creatures always in the, this difficult terrain but medium creatures aren't. So if you're facing a large creature, you can only hinder its movement while your whole party can still move as normal. You can do interesting things like that, pretty niche things. You could create an arena with it where, you know, everything in the arena isn't difficult terrain, everything out of it is pretty neat, but it really depends on being in the right terrain and you're not always gonna be in the right terrain, so it falls into situational. But it's also flavorful, where you can do this eight hour casting and now you can make a land more prosperous. And that's just very flavorful and fun. I love the flavor there, but it is flavor as opposed to utility. So we fall into situational utility, very powerful situational utility, but situational nonetheless. This likely ends up being a pass more often than not, but there are gonna be some bards I take this with, like the math musician. Sending, sending is a very fun spell. Laura Bailey, 
everyone. We know she loves her sending spells for good reason. They're awesome, they make the world a smaller place so you can still communicate with everybody you want to, but it's definitely falling under utility. If you're going for directly impactful utility, this likely falls on the wayside, but if no one else in your party has ways to communicate long range, this is actually pretty freaking good. Communication, believe it or not, is a massive deal in the world. Cell phones, everyone. and. By taking this right before a rest, you can pop off the rest of your spell slots to send some messages. And, you know, if you need to use all your spell slots during the day, you just wait till tomorrow. So it's one of those spells that I really do like, and I think you can get a lot of use out of it, but it has to be used correctly. Put it on the upper end of utility for me. Slow falls under the category of really great. It's a fight winning spell, but it's not hypnotic pattern. So it's in the same area as fear for me, where if I'm sick of using hypnotic pattern as my fight winning spell, I will consider slow because it is really really good next up is speak with dead so speak with dead is an information gathering utility i put it as you know kind of similar to clairvoyance i mean obviously different but clairvoyance is going to be competing with this for our information gathering utility yeah i find speak with dead pretty good but i find that its competition is stiff that it's going to be in the mid-range of utility competing with a whole bunch of other mid-range utility but for some builds this will be very flavorful and feel right to take and at the end of the day you're often going to find information through dead corpses that you may not have gotten elsewhere. Speak with plants. This is a weird spell that doesn't get used often. And I don't know if that's fair. It falls in the same category as speak with dead, as clairvoyance, but it's never taken where those sometimes are. And I, I question that, you know, I think plants often have something useful to say, especially for like, hey, what happened in this area recently? Did someone pass you? That type of thing, tracking, uh, finding out details about what happened in a certain area. However, of course, in case where someone was murdered inside a building, then speak with dead is obviously going to be better but if someone is stole something outside, Speak With Plants is obviously going to be better because there's no dead body. So they kind of compete and they are strong in different areas. Now what Speak With Plants has is like these weird niche situational uses where it can create some difficult terrain or remove difficult terrain or just break the entangle spell. You can situationally have them do different things like maybe you can convince them to open a window for you if the dm permits you ask some vines to do that so it's really weird and i think underutilized I, I i think i'm gonna have to take speak with plants and play around with it sometime because i have a sneaking suspicion that it's better than the community knows next up is stinking cloud stinking cloud definitely falls under our fight winning spells so if i said hypnotic pattern is tier one fear and slow are tier two this is tier three. This is the probably never going to take tier for bards because there's those other three spells to keep it fresh. And Stinking Cloud just has too many places of failure. Constitution saving throws, people being immune to the poison condition, people being able to hold their breath. All of those things ruin Stinking Cloud. So it's a pass for me. Tongues, this is a utility spell to communicate with anybody in the world. By the time you hit level five, you should know how big languages are going to be in your world. And if languages are coming up consistently, Tongues is gonna be a fantastic utility spell. But there's gonna be campaigns where everyone speaks common and it's never gonna be used. So it has a wide range in it and it depends on your ability to read your own game. This is the level where our fight winning spells really come online. We get four AOE fight winning spells, one of which I'm basically not considering. So we get three powerhouse fight winning spells. Combine that with a massive bump in utility. Where we were debuffing beforehand, we're not doing that as much. It's still like our fight winning spells kind of have that debuff vibe. But past that, we're more focused on utility now. We have things like dispel magic, we have information gathering spells, we have Lehman's tiny hut. Our utility bumps massively at level five. So third level spells really represent fight winning spells and a bump in utility. I am going through everything barred with a fine tooth comb. So if you have any questions relating to any element of the bard, it's either going to be on this playlist or it's going to be coming out soon. So hit the subscribe button so you can see it when it does. We are D&D Daily. We release new D&D content all the freaking time. So if that's interesting to you, if you love D&D, hit the subscribe button. We'll see you on the next one.